Today's lesson is taking a coffee break. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and my name is Helen. And today we've got a conversation involving ordering coffee at a coffee shop, and we've got Frank talking to the barista. I guess they know each other. Frank is going into this particular coffee shop. And、uh, well, he's not going to order his usual latte today. The barista here has a suggestion for him. Yes, it does seem like Frank often goes to this coffee shop, and、uh, a lot of people do that before they go to work or after they get to work. They might step out and get some coffee, and it's usually the coffee shop that's right around the corner or near the office. And since you go to the same coffee shop all the time, the barista might get to know you and know what you want. And usually, baristas are quite friendly, as particularly the good ones. And that way, you might establish a friendly relationship. Relationship with your local barista. Indeed, and so we've got a conversation today between the barista and Frank. So let's listen into part one, ordering coffee, and then we'll come back to talk about it. Taking a coffee break, ordering coffee. Frank walks up to the counter at his favorite coffee shop. Hi, Frank. Latte as usual. Hmm. I'd rather try something different today. In that case, we've got a new arrival that might be right up your alley. Oh yeah, what's that? Our caramel cream cold brew. It's a cool and refreshing drink that's a great way to beat the heat. Sounds delightful, and it's certainly a far cry from a boring old latte. Yeah, I'm a big fan myself. So you want to give it a try? Sure, why not? Great. Would you like the small, medium, or large? Medium, please. Okay, for here or to go? To go, please. All right, that's one medium caramel cream cold brew coming right up. Hello, On a hot day, there's nothing I like more than a refreshing glass of lemonade. 在大热天时，没有什么比来一杯清凉的柠檬水更让我喜欢的了。或者 ，Josh's new job was a refreshing change from his previous post. Josh 的新工作与他之前的职务相比，是个令人耳目一新的改变。另外，去掉这个字的字尾 ing 就会变成动词 refresh。它有使恢复精神，或是使恢复，也可以是更新的意思。例如 ，A short break will refresh you, and then you can continue to work. 短暂休息能使你恢复精神，然后你就可以继续工作。再看一个例子 ，Jack refreshed himself with a nice, relaxing shower. Jack 洗了一个舒服又令人精神焕发的澡。So in part one, we have Frank going to the coffee shop to order coffee. It's titled "Ordering Coffee," and Frank walks up to the counter at his favorite coffee shop, and the barista says, "Hi, Frank. Latte as usual." Now here, barista is the word that refers to somebody whose job is to make coffee behind the counter. Exactly, and some people pronounce this word barista, but、uh, barista is the pronunciation that at least I have in my dictionary. So I'm going to go with that. And so that's the person who serves the coffee in a coffee shop, and of course she greets Frank. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Are you going to have the usual latte? And Frank says, Hmm, I'd rather try something different. Today, this is a good idea because, as we say, variety is the spice of life. Sometimes you can't get stuck in a rut and do the same thing over and over every day. Frank is probably sick of having lattes every day. They're tasty, but he gets them every day, so he's kind of gotten、uh, tired of them. So he wants to try something different, and I suppose he wants the barista to give some suggestions to him. Yes, and the barista says, "In that case, we've got a new arrival that might be right up your alley." So the phrase "new arrival" refers to a product that's new that is just being introduced to the market, and often you'll see the words "new arrival" in a sign that's pointing to a new product. 
For instance, at Starbucks, you might have a new arrival for the season, a new type of drink. And the barista is saying to Frank that they have a new arrival that might be right up his alley. Right. That's an interesting phrase. If something is suitable for someone or it's something that they would like, we could say, hey, it's right up your alley. The new album by the band is right up your alley. It's the kind of music that you like. You should go out and buy that album or download the songs or whatever. And it's a new arrival, and the barista is familiar with Frank and what he likes. So she thinks that this particular drink, this new arrival, will be suitable for him. It's right up his alley. And Frank says, "Oh yeah, what's that? What is this new arrival? Tell me more about it." And the barista says, "Our caramel cream cold brew." That's the new arrival. It's titled the Caramel Cream Cold Brew. Now, this cold brew or this new type of drink is particular because it contains caramel cream. Caramel is a sweet, sticky substance that's made from sugar, butter, and milk, and it's often used to make pastries, sweets. And to put on top of ice cream and in coffee, right? And we should mention that this is one of those particular words that have different ways to pronounce it, depending on the person, depending on where they're from, etc. I grew up saying caramel, but I know some people say caramel or caramel. How do you say it exactly, Helen? I would say caramel. That would be the natural way for me to say it. Caramel. It's one of those words that have multiple pronunciations, and you can just choose the one you want. So this particular drink that the barista is introducing to Frank has caramel cream on it, and it's a cold brew. So a brew is a drink. Usually referring to a type of tea or coffee that's made by boiling the coffee grounds or the tea leaves, so that you get the liquid, the drink that is made from those substances, the leaves of tea or the coffee beans. Right, and brew here, of course, is a noun. It's referring to coffee, and that's from the verb form to brew, which means to make a particular kind of beverage. We use the word brew to talk about brewing tea, or brewing coffee, or brewing beer. Okay, you can't brew whiskey, though. I think we distill whiskey, or we distill other types of hard liquor. But here, of course, we brew coffee, and again, the word brew can also be. A noun, and this again is the caramel cream cold brew. And she says it's a cool and refreshing drink. That's a great way to beat the heat. Something's refreshing. It makes you feel new and alive. Yes, it makes you feel less tired, less hot. Sometimes you might want to take a cold shower if you want to feel refreshed. So a cold shower could be refreshing, and it's also a good way to. Beat the heat. To beat the heat means to make yourself feel cooler. If you're in the dead of summer in August and it's 35 degrees outside, you might want to beat the heat with a nicey cold drink. Right, and of course it's May now, so it's getting hotter and hotter. So people need to figure out ways to beat the heat to stay cool. Some people just stay indoors and turn on the AC. Other people will take a cold shower, and maybe they'll have this cold brew here. And Frank says, "Hmm, sounds delightful. Sounds tasty. Sounds wonderful." And it's certainly a far cry from a boring old latte. So again, delightful is something that causes delight. It causes joy. So if you drink this particular kind of coffee, you're going to feel very, very happy because it's new, it's refreshing, it's exciting, and you'll feel that life is worth living. Yes, and Frank goes on to say that it's certainly a far cry from a boring old latte. A far cry from here. Simply means to be very different from. So I could also say that the hotel I stayed in was very nice, but it was a far cry from being a luxury resort. So even though this hotel was really nice, it was still very different from, or not as good as, luxury resort. 
Now, you don't need to use a far cry from to describe something that's less or not as good as something else. It just means that it's very different from something else. Right. I think it's usually used to talk about something that is inferior in quality to something else. I could say the author's new book is a far cry from her previous novel, which was actually great. The new one is just kind of terrible. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. But in this particular case, he's saying, oh, certainly a far cry from a boring old latte, which means it's totally different from a latte that I've been drinking day after day, week after week. And the barista says, yeah, I'm a big fan myself. I like this caramel cream cold brew. So you want to give it a try? You can say that you don't need to put the do in there. You want to give it a try? We sometimes shorten our sentences that way. Yeah, and Frank says, sure, why not? Frank is enthusiastic to try this new drink. And the barista says, great. Would you like the small, medium, or large? So the barista is offering Frank three choices of sizes. Exactly. And he chooses the medium. He says, medium, please. And then there's the next question the barista asks, okay, for here or to go? Are you going to drink it here in the coffee shop or are you going to take it with you to work or home or whatever? He says, to go, please. Why die? And the barista says, all right, that's one medium caramel cream cold brew coming right up. So, of course, if the barista or the waiter or waitress in a restaurant is going to tell you that your food or your drink is going to be served very quickly, you can say this, coming right up, I will bring it to you as fast as possible. Okay, that brings us to the end of part one. Let's go on to part two and talk about different types of coffee. Let's listen. Different types of coffee. Frank returns to his office and finds his colleague Beth brewing a cup of drip bag coffee. Hi Frank, back from a coffee run? That's right, and I see you're about to get your caffeine fix too. Yeah, I don't go to coffee shops very often, but I like drip bag coffee when I'm at the office. It's just incredibly convenient. How about when you're at home? I prefer to grind my own coffee beans at home. That way I can choose the flavor of beans and the roast level I like. Interesting. What kinds of equipment do you use to make your coffee? If I'm using light roast beans, which retain more of the coffee's flavors and emphasize floral and citrus notes, I'll use a pour-over brewer. But I sometimes use an espresso machine if I want a thicker coffee. It sounds like you're very particular about the way your coffee tastes. And you know a lot of information about coffee that I'd never heard before. Yeah, I just like to try different types of coffee. And in fact, there's a lot to know about coffee. If you're interested, I could tell you more sometime. Sure, I'd love to learn more. The herbal form is colleague. It's a colleague. Ricky and his colleagues enjoyed an expensive dinner to celebrate their department's performance. Ricky and his colleagues enjoyed an expensive dinner to celebrate their department's performance. Ricky and his colleagues enjoyed an expensive dinner to Windmills grind grain and turn it into flour. 风车把麦粒磨碎成面粉. 又或者说, Nathan prefers to grind his coffee beans by hand instead of using a machine. Nathan喜欢手磨咖啡豆,而不是用机器. 再举一个例子, The spices for tonight's curry have been ground into powder. 今晚咖喱所需要的香料都已经被磨成粉了. 最后我们看到单字, retain. 它是动词指的是保留、保存或是保有。例如, Frank has retained his sense of humor, despite living a hard life. 即使生活过得很苦, Frank还是保有他的幽默感。或是, The police retained the stolen goods in a warehouse. 警方将赃物保存在一间仓库里。
So in part two, titled Different Types of Coffee, Frank has returned to his office and he finds his colleague Beth brewing a cup of drip bag coffee. Now, Beth is Frank's colleague. That means Beth works with Frank. A colleague is somebody you work with. And it's a word that is used especially between professionals, lawyers, accountants, office workers, a more general term that has the same meaning as colleague, but that refers to all different types of workers is co-worker. You can say, Frank is my co-worker if you work in any type of environment, but colleague is used more for office situations. Indeed it is, and Beth has a question for Frank. Hi, Frank. Back from a coffee run? Are you back from going out to pick up coffee for yourself or for other people? That's what a run here means, when you go out to get something or when you go out to get some supplies. And Frank says, that's right. And I see you're about to get your caffeine fix too. So if you get your fix, that means you get the thing that you want to consume. And of course, lots of people start the day with a cup of coffee because they want that good old caffeine to wake them up. Caffeine, of course, is a chemical substance in coffee and in tea and other drinks and substances, which again stimulates your body to make you feel awake. Right. You can also say, I need my sugar fix now if you have a very very strong craving for sugar you might want to have a chocolate chip cookie or some kind of sweet drink so you might want to satisfy your sugar fix or your sugar craving by having a sweet pastry and Beth says yeah I don't go to coffee shops very often, but I like drip bag coffee when I'm at the office. Some people brew their coffee by using the drip method, where you have hot water or cold water dripping down into the coffee and it slowly seeps through the coffee and then comes out at the bottom into the cup. It can take a couple of minutes to brew a cup of coffee this way, and that's the way she likes to serve her coffee using this drip bag coffee coffee method. I guess uh, they sell those in convenience stores. They're like these little bags that you kind of open up at the top of your coffee cup and then you pour hot water through it. Yes, those are quite convenient and they tend to be cheaper as well than buying individual cups of coffee at a coffee shop. And Beth also says it's just incredibly convenient. So here incredibly doesn't mean you can't believe it. It means it's very incredibly used in such contexts. It's just a way to emphasize something. So it's very convenient and that's one of the reasons why Beth likes it. And Frank says, how about when you're at home? How do you brew your coffee at home? And Beth says, I prefer to grind my own coffee beans at home. So she goes to a coffee shop somewhere and buys the whole beans, and then she will grind those beans in a coffee grinder. So that's grind here. That's the verb that just refers to take something and break it down into smaller parts, usually into some sort of powder. Yes, and Beth says, that way I can choose the flavor of beans and the roast level I like. So Beth is very, very knowledgeable about coffee because she understands that different beans have different flavors and that beans can be roasted to become very dark or they can spend less time roasting. And I personally don't know that much about coffee roasting, but I do know that the amount of time that you roast beans and the different types of beans will produce a cup of coffee that is different from another cup in taste and in other subtle characteristics. Yep, there is a science to coffee and Frank says, hmm, interesting. What kinds of equipment do you use to make your coffee? And Beth says, well, if I'm using light roast beans, which retain more of the coffee's flavors and emphasize floral and citrus notes, I'll use a pour over brewer, but I sometimes use an espresso machine if I want a thicker coffee. So here she wants to retain more of the coffee's flavors. To retain something means to keep it, to not let it get away. 
Yes, I could say, for instance, that the company is trying to retain its employees by offering them improved benefit packages and higher salaries.、Mm-hmm. So again, here Frank continues the conversation and says, "Hmm, it sounds like you're very particular about the way your coffee tastes. If you're particular about something, you are choosy. You are picky about something. You are selective, and you want things just so." And he goes on to say, "And you know a lot of." Information about coffee that I'd never heard before. So Frank doesn't really know much about coffee. A lot of people don't really know much about coffee. It's okay. You don't have to be an expert. I never knew much about coffee when I was growing up. I didn't learn about、uh, how to make latte or espresso until many years after I'd graduated from high school. And Beth says, "Yeah, I just like to try different types of coffee." And in fact, there's a lot to know about coffee. Indeed, it's a science, and there's a lot to learn about it. And Beth says to Frank, "If you're interested, I could tell you more sometime." Yep, and Frank says, "Sure, I'd love to learn more, and I think all of us would love to learn more about how to make coffee, or how to make tea, or how to understand spoken English. And that's why our Chinese teacher is here with us now. Let's listen." Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。在课文第一部分的对话里 ，Frank 来到他最喜欢的咖啡店。他告诉咖啡师，他今天想要尝试不一样的。那么咖啡师就回答 ，In that case, we've got a new arrival that might be right up your alley. 好，句子里面用到 new arrival 就是表达新品、新货上市。那至于 up somebody's alley 或者是 right up somebody's alley， 可以表达和某人的喜好、口味。这个用语其实也可以表达正是某人最拿手的、很适合某人的那种意思。好，那文中他提到说 ，we've got a new arrival that might be right up your alley， 意思就是说我们有一款新品，可能正符合你的喜好。好，那另外要介绍的就是 in that case 这个用语，它可以表达说在那种情况下，或是既然如此，假如是那样的话。那通常呢，它是会摆在句首，意思就跟 if that's the case 或是 that being the case 差不多。假设朋友说如果晚一点离开，我们就会碰到塞车，哎，这时候可以回答 in that case we'd better leave early。既然如此，那样的话，我们最好早点离开。好，那这边补充两个跟 case 有关的用法。第一个是用 in any case， 这个字面意思是在任何情况下，那它是指说无论如何，不管怎样。举例来说 ，I'm not sure how long the meeting will take， but I'll call you tonight in any case。我不确定会议会开多久，但不管怎么样，我今天晚上会打电话给你的。那第二个用法是 in somebody's case， 或者是 in something's case。你也可以用 in the case of 去接一个名词来表达以什么的例子或情况来说。那么 case 在这边就有情况案例的意思。举例来说 ，berries are good for your health. In the case of blueberries, they can help lower blood pressure. 美果对健康有益。以蓝莓为例，它可以帮助降低血压。好，那么咖啡师接着就向 Frank 推荐他们的焦糖奶油冷萃，那是一款清凉提神、很棒的消暑饮品。那这边用到 beat the heat， 字面意思是击败暑气，也就是消暑的意思咯，用来只说在炎炎夏日中保持凉爽。那我们这边也补充两个和动词 beat 相关的片语，第一个是 beat the odds。O D D S odds， 它有可能性的意思。那在赌盘中也代表着赔率。Beat the odds， 就像在赌盘当中，你击败了赔率，赢了钱，那就可以用来表达在不被看好的情况下，克服万难，成功克服困难喽。好，例如 ，Last year her father beat the odds and recovered from COVID-19。他的父亲去年啊，克服困难，在经历新冠肺炎后复原起来。好，那么第二个补充的用语是 beat the clock。这不是说要去打时钟、去揍时钟，这是要像是跟时间赛跑、时间紧迫，你要把它打败嘛。所以 beat the clock 就是表达说，在特定时间之前赶完某件事，去完成某个任务。如果我们说 we barely beat the clock， 就可以表达说我们勉强在特定时间前赶完，差一点就来不及了。好，那么以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单字吧。Delightful, 
After her busy morning, Dawn thought a long nap would be delightful. Colleague. Dr. Johnson's colleagues were impressed by his knowledge of rare diseases. Incredibly, the artist's new painting was incredibly detailed. Grind. A mill is used to grind wheat into flour. Retain. This mug is specially designed to retain heat. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Helen. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.